hello there. I went to prison. You guys know, most of you guys know. The reason why I haven't talked about it is because it's a difficult topic. It led to a shit ton of heartbreak. I don't blame anyone else but myself. I wanna tell you my prison stories. I have tons. I've always wanted to jump on here and be like, okay, so this one time when I accidentally got a girlfriend, but I can't do that, why the fuck did you go to prison? You know what I mean? Like that is a very curious question and I get it. Sometimes when you're put into a desperate situation, you do desperate shit. Early 20s. Long story short, I sold Molly and I got caught. I did it because I thought it was going to get me, you know, fast cash. It did, but it didn't, you know what I mean? Everything completely backfired. Uh, obviously, you know how the story ends. I ended up going away to prison and I am not going to be including anyone else in this story. It's not something to be proud of at all, but I really wanna tell you guys my experience. So I'm just gonna be talking about me. The place that I was staying at was raided. It was so scary. Guns drawn on you, not fun. Got hauled off down to the jail was interviewed, talked, fought the case. I was looking at three to five years, which I would have gotten three because I have no mitigating factors. I have no, uh, I was very shocked. Downstairs in the courthouse, there is an area where they call them pretend lawyers, which they are real lawyers. You will get lucky and get ones that care about you, but you'll also get ones that really just want you to sign your life away and get the heck out so they can get to the next guy. I went downstairs to the courthouse and I go into this room, I'm called, right? And this really old, old man, he was a lawyer for like 30 years. He was retired and was just doing this, you know, cause he wanted to be kind. So woo, I got a nice guy. It was very like, very nonchalant, you know, just like he was reading me the menu off of a, from a McDonald's menu and he, push the paper to me. Well, first of all, I get in the room, I sit down and he says, you're in big trouble. He pushed the paper to me and he said, they wanna give you three to five. You'll get three if you sign right now. I screamed very loudly. I screamed bloody murder. And I said, are you, I really felt like somebody had stabbed me in the heart. I lost, I lost, I lost the air in my, in my, in my, in my voice. My prosecutor was a girl and I remember seeing her and hearing her talk about me for the first time in court. She wants blood. I told them I'm gonna get a lawyer because I called a lawyer because I was told if I fight it and try to get it not have three years, if I took it to trial, I would probably end up getting like 15 years. Wow, you're really putting me up against a corner here. <laughs> so I decided to get a lawyer, I fought it, for quite some time. They were like, here you go. Here's your final offer. It's one to three years. Don't worry. You're probably going to get the one year because there's no mitigating factors. Probably is not good enough for me. You know, if I was a gazillionaire, I probably would have been just fine. I hope that my answer was good enough. It quenches the question. And now I can tell you prison stories. I have bad ones and good ones. I try to think of story times and they're just so boring to me. I don't want to bore you. I want to be exciting over here. I want to be exciting on all of my platforms. By the way, I did take my nighttime dose. It's peanut butter and then I have a spoon and then I put distillate and then RSO on it and I mix it and that's my nighttime my my nighttime dose. Blue Dream, which is a sativa indica. It's a very nice one for nighttime and then I had Z Skittles, a little dot of RSO. It makes me so tired which is why it's my nighttime dose. But I guess let's tell some stories. I went to jail first. You have to go to jail for a whole month when you sign a plea offer. There's nothing funny to talk about with jail. I was there when Jody Arias was there. One of the rules, you know, big time, don't ask what somebody did. That person might've killed somebody and you know, they're gonna be very offended that you asked them. <laughs> Yes, from experience. I go into the holding cell. I'm not wearing anything warm because I, I was trying, you know, I wanted to look nice and for court. And which uh, my advice, if this is ever happening to you, if you're going to court and you know that you're going to be going into jail, don't dress up, wear some sweatpants and a sweatshirt. It's cold in there. I was wearing heels and I was wearing, I was wearing a very thin shirt and I was wearing pants 
that were very thin. I'm in this holding cell with like a bunch of girls. Everything was very cemented. I was told that I was going to be in that holding cell for such and such time. I knew it was gonna be hours and hours and hours. I already knew that. Officer writer, she was an older, older uh, officer. She was so sweet, but you know what sweet gets you? Sweet gets you people running all over you. That's what happens, absolute chaos. I spent three days in this holding cell. I ate three rolls of bread. I had two oranges and I had three milks. I did not sleep. I was in like a fog. I don't know what's happening. I was so cold. I was freezing. I was losing my mind. I was really starting to lose my concept of reality, right? By the third day. And finally, when they called my name and I got up, I was crying, not because I was sad or scared anymore. I was crying because I was finally, I was finally doing it, man. I was getting the freak out of there and going to another jail. <laughs> they gave me my stripes. They gave me a mat, which I was so happy. It was very thin and very hard, but you know what? It felt luxurious after sitting on that hard freaking step thing. What is it called? It's a bench. It's a bench and you can't even lay on the bench because they have metal bars every so, you know, but I call it because that's how much so you can't even lay down and there was one point where all the girls got toilet paper unrolled all of it and we all huddled in the middle of the jail floor of the holding cell and we're cuddling to be warm we got in so much trouble but I felt so comfortable they were they were really mean about, about that get the, get the fuck out of my I always gotta yell you don't have to yell so much Jeez Louise oh my nighttime nose is kicking in. <laughs> when I went to the actual jail, there was about a hundred girls in this pod. So we're all being waiting to be arranged, arranged, arranged. Is that the right word? It was very scary. I got there around three in the morning. This girl got down from the bunk and she gave me a water bottle and she said, here's your water bottle. Store doesn't come until Thursday, which was a week. And I did not have any deodorant, okay? for a week, did you hear me? And also they don't give you razors cause that can be used as a weapon. There is a huge difference between jail and prison. There was a lot more structure in the prison than there was in jail. Jail, it was just insane. When the guards were watching over us that they were mean, everybody would listen, we'd get sleep and you know, nothing would be crazy. But when the nice guards like, Mrs. Ryder, you are an angel on earth. She really was a little old lady and she would come in and I would just, I'd be happy to see her, but I wouldn't be. Cause I'm like, there is no sleep's going to happen tonight at all. <laughs> like everybody's loud, screaming, fighting, making a mural of period blood. And you know what? I thought I was never going to see that again. But when I got to prison, there was a lady. Oh my God. I'm going to have to write down talking points. You guys. There's like a lot. I got kicked out of this pod because this girl next to me beat up this other girl and this girl that got beat up told on everybody saying this girl hoards her milk. This girl does this, this girl does this and then dragged me into it and said that me and this other girl were in cahoots. But so she was just tattling on everybody because she was, she didn't want to be in trouble or whatever. I don't know. She was just spilling the beans like, okay, girl, Jesus, you do know you're going to have to come back to the pod. You guys can probably guess what happened to her when she ended up coming back to the pod after she got released from the hole. What happened to me on the other hand? I was kicked out of my pod that I was finally comfortable with in. I had built a rapport. I had friends. I was safe. When when they told me the pod I was getting moved to, my girlfriends I had already, you know, they'd been through this before. They know. Blah, 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 blah. They go, oh, people are going to mess with you. Just da, da, da. I'm like, you know, why, man? Why you got to make it sound so gloomy and doomy? I got in this pod. Let me try to explain the energy. Ooh, I could cut the hatred with, with a butter knife still. To this day, it was so bad. And that was years ago. This one had a lot of more rugged females. This woman wanted to start some stuff. She was probably like in her 60s. She had a couple teeth. One wasn't so great. One was a, it was, a little off white. I just want to paint you a picture so you can just envision who did this to me. Or you know those ads you see like, don't do meth, this is what will you will look like. 
I let this girl, <laughs> I let this girl and she was such a bully. She asked me for my shampoo and I was like, okay. And I just got it and she came back and it was, this much was left and the bottle was like that big. I cried. There was no way I was fighting her because also I didn't want to lose my good time because I guess like you could get out like early, you know, if you're good, which I lost because I did get into a fight. This lady, we'll call her Crystal. She, <laughs> oops, I didn't even mean to do that. She went and she started spreading a rumor that I snitched on her dudes and that's why they're getting a bunch of time. That will get you hurt. That's messed up, right? That's like a really, that's like a really bad accusation that you can make against somebody while you're in jail or in prison. I feel the tension all day. I know something's going on. People are acting weird towards me. And then mealtime comes around. She goes, she goes, yo, you snitched. And I was like, what? What are you talking about? And she goes, yeah, I know you snitched. I got your paperwork. And when she said this, everybody got up from the metal picnic table they were sitting at. And by everybody, I mean like four girls, but still that's a lot for me. I do not like confrontation. Look at this. <laughs> I'm at my breaking point, okay? Hot thing, it's not going, it's not going well. I'm so stressed. And this is what I do. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I, this is too much. I swear to God, that's what happened. <laughs> it was real. I had a breakdown, tears flowing. And I'm just like, fine, kick my ass. A group of girls came to my rescue. You know what? Leave her alone. You know you never looked at her paperwork because they kept saying they're like, we looked at your paperwork. Those girls kind of stopped messing with me. Then the next thing that happened, well, I said I was a vegetarian because the slop, which is exactly what it is, it's stew with like meat, vegetable, I don't know what, but it's slop and it was so smelly, so disgusting. A girl told me to do this. Say you're a vegetarian and you'll get broccoli, rice, mangoes, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, that sounds amazing. So I said I was a vegetarian. They give you like one third cup of white rice and a few broccoli florets with still with the razor blade outside on the broccoli, which I didn't even know they had that until I went to jail. If you drive by the Estrella jail, if you smell a nasty broccoli sloppy smell, that is the food. Not true, you get breakfast, which breakfast was a little container of peanut butter, a fruit, which was either an orange or a grapefruit, and then a milk. You also got a loaf of, a little loaf of bread. You don't wanna forget that. Here's the next issue that happened. There was a girl who was pregnant with twins. I don't know where she got this idea from. She wrote me a letter. I opened up this letter. This is what the letter read. I've been watching you for all the days you've been here. You're so beautiful. You're so caring. And I think that you would be perfect for my twins. Perfect for your twins? What are you talking about? There was a lot. It was a love letter. It was an actual love letter she wrote to me. How do you, now I got a brain, I, you become, you, you get girlfriends like real quick. I went like, you get girlfriends real quick without knowing it sometimes. So there was times when I had a girlfriend and I wasn't, I didn't even know when I was pissing people off and like, I'm like, what? Because I gave you some soap in the shower? No, you need to snip this in the bud very, 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 very quickly. I did. And I told her, I said, yo, like. She was like acting as if I like, I was the father and I broke up with her. It was very, very odd. When I ended up finally going to prison, it was the happiest day ever because jail was just so, so crappy. Uh, a lot of other things happened in jail, but this nothing is coming to my mind because my mind is going away. <laughs> So we get into the truck. Thankfully, I had a very, very good friend with me. So we get off of the bus, right? And it was so crazy seeing like all the females in orange, like we're now we're in prison. We're in prison now. And it felt crazy. Such a large facility. We have to go to RNA. And I'm skipping some stuff here, but we go to RNA and RNA is places is, is basically a place where you go. You have to be sorted out. The counselor is going to see Look at what you did, all your crimes and stuff, and see which yard you're going to be put on. Now we're about to be in cells. 23 and 1. That means you're locked down for 23 hours and you get to come out for one hour a day. If 
the officer wants to give you outside time, which a lot of the times they did not. When you go to chow, you have 10 minutes to scarf down your food, which you're starving and you cannot take anything back to yourself, which everybody would get pat down on the way out. I am a drifting. Everybody was getting pat, everybody would get pat down on the way out. And oh my God, there was little tiny prairie dogs all over the place. Oh, they were so cute. I was told I was gonna be in the room with somebody who was gonna be, of course, I'm going to be there with somebody who was on the same level of charge because when we were going to RNA, there were girls there that had killed. I'll just say that crazy. And I don't want to be in this. That's why I was freaking out. Well, guess what? I was put in a cell with somebody who was not even close to the same charges that I was. A lot of sleepless nights. I'm not going to tell you what she did. Actually, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave that alone. Um, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave that one alone. I was very scared of her, okay? I'm gonna admit it. She was mean one minute and really nice the next minute. I was on the top bunk, very top bunk, and she was on the very bottom. I wanted to be as far away as I possibly could, which is very hard in a very tiny cell, let me tell you. I'm gonna lose my fucking mind. Every single day you go out at four in the morning. You go out of your cell and you wait for the officer to read off a list of all of the inmates who have found their homes. And every single day, my name and her name wasn't read off and I would go, and she'd go fuck, but I'd be saying fuck for a different reason. It was because I had to spend another day with her. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She asked me one night if she could braid my hair. And of course I'm not gonna say no because she would beat me up. I sat down and she was braiding my hair. And I'm gonna be honest, this was a very enjoyable experience. She made the tiniest little braids all over my hair. We actually talked. I got to know her and still scared me. I hope that she changed her life around and I hope that she's doing better. We stayed up the whole night just talking, just sharing stories. She was sharing this, I was sharing this, da da da. We stood out that door and we're like, we're not getting called today, we already know. And sure enough, they called my name. <laughs> After spending all this time together and being like totally afraid of her, now I was like, I hope we get to, I hope we go in the same yard together. And she was like, I'm going on next. And I was like, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and she did. All right, I think I'm going to end it on that story and we will continue this. If you would like me to continue this, I mean, I have like a whole entire year of stories to tell you. I love you, I love you, I love you. And until next time. Mwah.